Okay, so last we left off, we were talking about electronegativity. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, good. So make sure that I haven't gone completely mad. Long class. Okay, electronegativity. Oh, and I need to fix your, your homework assignments too. Ooh, Lord. Okay. So when we're talking about electronegativity, um, the way that we sit there and determine it, first off, again, these are arbitrary numbers, right? So they're kind of make they're based upon the energy that was required to break different types of bonds. And so they found that like fluorine with anything is really, really hard to break. So that means like fluorine has a really strong pull on things, right? So fluorine has the highest electronegativity, where francium is really, really weak, right? So then that means it doesn't have a very strong pull. It, it's like here, here, take my electron. It's yours. I don't want it, right? So, but it's just for that, that first electron, okay? So this helps us dictate what's going to be polar and what's going to be nonpolar, right? And the way that we would do that is, again, these values. So we take these values and we look at the bonds between these two items. Like, so for instance, we're looking at carbon and fluoride or fluorine, right? So then the bond between carbon and fluorine, right? We would just sit there and take the value for carbon which is 2.5, and you take the one who has the highest, which is fluorine, 4.0, subtract them from each other, and your value here would be, what, 1.5? Is that correct? Make sure my math is, you know, still early. My coffee hasn't set in yet. But obviously, yours hasn't either. Come on, Sadie. Is yes, four? Yes, yes. Okay, good. Okay, so we know that that's 1.5. So the way it works is, is that if it is 0. 0.4, if it's less than 0. 0.4, less than or equal to 0. 0.4, it's going to be Nonpolar or pure. If it's if it is greater than zero point four, but less than 1.8, then it's going to be polar. And then if it's greater than or equal to 1.8, It's going to be ionic. Simple? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would this guy be? Would it be polar, nonpolar, or ionic? Yeah. It would be polar, right? And that kind of makes sense, right? Because we know that fluorine is pretty strong and it's going to have a strong pool. Okay, let's do something like oxygen and fluorine. So what would I do? Four point zero to a three point five. Okay, four point zero minus three point five. Just be zero point five. Zero point five. Piece of cake. Yep. Okay. Okay, and this is that table that's just basically showing you those numbers, right? 
Okay, so let's see those skills. You guys have, I'll give you guys six minutes, put you in groups. You guys come up with some answers. There? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Let's see who's here. We have. Two breakout rooms, create options. So six minutes. Um, three, one, two, three, four. Okay. Rooms are open.
guys are back. Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So group one, group one, it consists of Selena, uh, Sadie, Matt, and Kayla. Okay, so you guys are gonna be responsible for those first three. And group two, you guys are gonna be responsible for the second three, okay? Show me your skills, put them up on the board. And then if you guys have any questions, we can talk about it. Okay. Uh, Dr. Henry, do we have to write which one is the partial positive and which one's the partial negative? Yep. Okay.
Okay, let's see. Second group, are you guys gonna give me my partial positives and partial negatives? We're trying to figure that out. Okay. So think about it. What does that mean? What does that partial positive and partial negative mean? Kind of talked about it before. The mouse doesn't want to work. Okay, good, good, let's see. Looks good. Okay, let's see. What was that? Okay, partial. Partial positive. Partial negative. Okay, so the only thing here, this is a nonpolar one, right? So the, the strength of it isn't strong enough to really consider it to be a partial positive and a partial negative. Although some books will call it, you know, uh, the carbon for the first one for carbon and hydrogen. Some books do call it partial positive, partial negative, but in actuality, that's not the case. Are you guys there? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, why is it neither? What was that? Why is it neither? 
part because it's a non-polar. So in the sense, yeah, in the sense, the pool isn't strong enough to actually be pulling an electron from it. So it would be neither, neither because it's a non-polar molecule. That means they're kind of sharing evenly. So if there is a pool, then it's unshared. If it's polar, it's uneven sharing. So then there's a pool in that case, right? So then that means that the electron is being pulled on one side or the other. If they're sharing evenly, if it's a nonpolar molecule, then there's no pool. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because think about it, we're talking about electrons, right? So in this case, what we're saying is, let's say in the case of carbon and hydrogen, uh, case of carbon and hydrogen, we have carbon bonded to hydrogen, right? So we're saying that each of these electrons here are being shared evenly. So carbon gets it half the time and hydrogen gets it half the time, right? So then because electrons are negatively charged, if they're being shared evenly, so it's kind of like you have zero on both sides. They're both balancing each other out. Where if we had carbon and oxygen, well, oxygen is stronger than carbon. So that means that the electron is gonna be spending more time with the oxygen. So the electron is gonna be circling the oxygen more than it's circling carbon. So that's kind of like oxygen gets it 75% of the time and carbon only gets it 25%. So since the electron is spending more time with oxygen, then it's gonna have a partial negative charge because electron is negative. It's around oxygen more. So oxygen is gonna be a little more negative than carbon. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me clear. Oops. Okay. Okay. So the next thing is Lewis dot structures. You guys should remember this from back in the day, but we'll see how well you guys do. So in the case of uh, Lewis dot structures, we're talking about the number of valence electrons. So you guys know how to establish valence electrons. We did that last week. We kind of talked about it. So now we need a quick way of depicting it to help us understand how the bonding is going to occur. So the way that we would do a Lewis dot structure is you want to put the number of valence electrons around it. So in this case, we're using um, calcium. So if we look on p-table. So p-table, we know that calcium has two valence electrons. They're in the 4s, where when we write our nice little electron configuration. We get the A, our core, AR, and then 4S2. So these electrons, these are our valence electrons. You guys recall, this is our core. So those guys are kind of like protected. We're not going to use those unless we absolutely must use them. So, and it usually it's not a must because once we get rid of these or we share these, then it's no longer, we're no longer needed for, for it because they're stable. You're in a stable state. And the goal is to be stable. It'll be like, that's like argon in that. So that means that these guys are available for reacting, right? And so these are considered your valence. So we want a quick way of showing that. And the way that we do that is by putting dot. One, two, okay? Because there's two electrons for us to work with. And remember, Ultimately, you want to either have no dots around you or you want to have eight dots around you. So your motivation is to try to be stable, right? Like the noble gases and have your, your octet full. And the reason why we call it octet is because usually it's eight around us. Or we want to have none around us. So then we'll be like the noble gas before it. So it'll be just like argon if it has none around it. Okay. But initially, the way we want to write it, we want to write it as if it's the element, if we're talking about the element itself, okay? So we have two around calcium. So sodium, how many do we have around sodium? 
how many dots we're going to have for our study. One. One. Good job. What about phosphorus? Five. Five. Oops. What about chlorine? Seven. Okay, I know my dots are ugly. Sadie, stop making fun of my dots. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Good. Okay, so clear. Move on. Okay. Come on. Okay, and so this table just basically shows you that here's our electron configuration, and here are the dots around it. Simple, it's real simple, right? Not too hard. Yeah, so is there a certain order you have to put the dots in? Um, sort of, right? And really, it, it doesn't make too much difference for our, our depiction, but to kind of help us understand, remember how the dots are going to line up. So usually, like, in the case of this, these guys are both in the same orbital, right? So often I will remember, oh yeah, those guys are in the same orbital. I would write it MG and I'd put them both on one side, right? Because I remember they're in the same orbital. Where if we have nitrogen, right? We have, it's five, right? So I have two that represents the S shells or the S shell. And then I have one in each of its individual orbitals, right? But I do that for me. Right? It's not necessary. It's just to help me remember. Okay. Cool. Okay. But you're not going to have them all on one side, like say the case of nitrogen. You're never going to do this. Because what is the most that you can have in an orbit, in an orbital? Two. two, right? So you're, the most that you're going to have in a, technically in an orbital is two. Although when we start talking about bonding, you'll be manipulating things. So, but I never overload a side. Okay. Clear. Okay, so let's move on. <laughs> okay, so this just basically shows us how we can use the Lewis dot structure. So in the case of we have sodium, right? The sodium ion, well, we know, I mean, sodium and it becomes the ion. We know that sodium metal is gonna wanna become an ion. So that atom is gonna wanna become ionic. So it's gonna lose that one electron. So then we would depict it like this. And then when we do our Lewis dot structures, although it's not here, we would typically draw, since it's now charged, we would draw brackets around it. Okay, and that's the same thing with any other ones. Okay, questions, concerns, Cash? No. Okay, good. So when we put those guys together, sodium plus chloride, it forms both of those both of those ions and they come together to form a compound, an a, a ionic compound. And so we show that the electrons are being transferred in, in this case, right? And you wanna put both of these brackets. I gotta fix my image. So it was stolen from the book. So. Okay. Questions, concerns, cash? Okay, so
So when we're talking about Lewis dot structures are primarily used when we're talking about sharing electrons. So because, you know, ionic compounds is about give and take. One is just going to give it up really to the other one. And so we can use it for it, but it doesn't really, doesn't really help clarity. But in the case of, of covalent bonding, where you're sharing electrons, we use loose dot structures quite a bit. And remember, the goal of all elements is to be stable, right? So their goal is to try to be stable. So in the case of fluorine interacting with chlorine to form our chlorine molecule, right? So both of these have seven electrons around it. So their goal is to try to have eight electrons around it. So they'll be like, who are they trying to be like? Noble gases. The noble gas? So look at the noble gas. Chlorine is what you like? I can't hear you, Dr. Henry. I said, which noble gas is chlorine want to be like? Argon. Argon. Okay. So argon has eight electrons around it. It has a complete shell. So chlorine also wants to try to have eight around it. So right now, chlorine has seven. But if it shares that one electron with the other chlorine, then it has eight. So it comes together by sharing that one electron. So they each donate one electron to share. So if we count the number of electrons around chlorine now, you have two, four, six, eight. Okay, so then it forms a bond. So the, the electrons that are being shared are gonna be drawn as a line. So that line represents two electrons that are being shared. And then these guys are considered lone pairs, right? So they're surrounding just that one chlorine. Where this guy, these electrons are going between both chlorines. You guys understand that? Yeah. Okay. So that's the same thing in the case of hydrogen. Hydrogen wants to be like helium. So then because helium needs two electrons Helium has two electrons around it. So hydrogen only can hold two electrons around it. So it's going to only want to share one electron between the two. So will hydrogen ever be in the middle of a structure? So if we have, let's say, Okay, so if we have, should write it right, CH, 3OH, right? Hydrogen will never be the center atom. So never, because it always has to be on the side because it can only hold two electrons total, right? And if it's the center atom, try to put it in the middle, that means it's holding four electrons, right? So you'll ne never see anything like this. because hydrogen can never be a center atom. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so again, all the electrons wanna to try to reach the octet. Now there are gonna be some exceptions. You're gonna break your octet rule every once in a while. But your goal is to ultimately be just like the noble gases and have eight electrons around them, right? Eight valence electrons. Because then that means that you have a complete full shell and you're stable. Okay. So let's say we have, let's see, C, Cl4. Okay. So when we're talking about compounds, right? The guy who is the weakest in terms of electronegativity is always gonna be your center atom, right? So who is weaker in electronegativity, carbon or chlorine? Carbon. Carbon. Okay, so carbon is gonna be our center atom. How many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. We have four, one, two, 
three, four, right? So we have four chlorines, right? And how many valence electrons does chlorine have? Seven. Okay, so then So how many electrons are going to be shared between chlorine and carbon? Are you talking total? No, each one. Wouldn't it be two? So that they can so that they can be. So how many is chlorine going to contribute and how many is carbon going to contribute? Maybe that's what we're asking. For it to reach its octet. Do you understand what I'm asking you? Let me, let me rephrase the question. So chlorine is here, it has seven, right? If it wanted to reach its octet, octet means what again? It needs one more. It needs one more. It needs to have eight around it, right? So carbon is gonna contribute one to this chlorine. It's gonna share one electron. So that's gonna form one bond, right? So if we count the number of electrons around carbon, I mean, around chlorine, we have two, four, six, eight, okay? So each of these chlorines are gonna be sharing that one, one electron between carbon, right? So then carbon has how many electrons? Seven. Seven. It has eight, that's correct. Two, four, six, eight, okay? So again, they wanna reach their octet. So you wanna kinda of keep a running tally, right? So each chlorine has a total of seven valence electrons. Seven times four is how many? 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. Plus four, carbon has four. That's a total of what? 32. 32. So 32, so it's CLs, these are our carbons. Okay, so we have 32 electrons to work with. So then you wanna just verify that you've used all the electrons and you're not shorting any of So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, eight, 30, 32. Okay, so all 32 electrons are being used and everybody, everybody's octet has been satisfied. So they're good to go. Okay, good so far? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you another thing, right? So at some point, there are gonna be certain, the possibility of having multiple structures, right? So the way that we determine which structure is more stable or which more structure is more relevant is what we call, and we'll actually get into this a little bit more later on, Um, ooh, hold on. Give me one second, okay? Um, okay, for some reason. Come on. Okay, can you guys see my slides? Yeah, no. Yes, no way. Oh yeah, no. No? Yeah. You can't see my yeah, slides. Now, yeah, we can. Okay. Okay, and you see, you see just one slide, right? Yeah. Not seven. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so this basically is an example. So can you guys do me a favor and draw the electron configuration? for these compounds? Am 
I mean, not the electron configuration, the, uh, the Lewis dot structure for these compounds. Yeah, I'll do C. You'll do C? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, Abby, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be right, but I'll try. Okay. Who's gonna do A? Okay, who's gonna do B? I can do it. Okay. Let's see. Looks good. The only thing, it's easier to draw the line. Although both of would be acceptable, but one looks more pretty than the other. Okay. Okay. Questions, concerns, Ash? Okay, so all of the, get, the guys that we've talked about earlier are single bonds, right? So single bond is just sharing two electrons between 
uh, two atoms. A double bond would be sharing four electrons between two atoms. So here are examples of double bonds. So we have formalin. So for both of these guys to reach their octet, this guy has two, four, six, eight around it. This guy has two, four, six, eight around it. And then the hydrogens are coming off the carbon. So this allows everybody to reach this octet. So in this case, they're going to be forming what we call double bonds. Double bonds is that sharing of four electrons. Okay. Here's another example where we have um, ethylene or ethane. So, uh, I mean, ethene. Okay. In this case, the carbon is sharing four electrons between the two, so it forms a double bond. So that's two, four, six, eight around this carbon, two, four, six, eight around that carbon, and it's able to reach the top. Okay. You guys see that? Questions, concerns, cash? Okay. And then sometimes we're going to have to form triple bonds where we're sharing six total electrons. So in the case of carbon monoxide, triple bond. For everybody to reach its octet, two, four, six, eight around the carbon, and then two, four, six, eight around the oxygen. So we form what we call a triple bond with lone pairs on each of the sides. And here in the case of the cyanide ion, we have the carbon. We, and in the case of a minus charge, that means we're adding an additional electron, right? So we have one additional electron. So how many valence electrons does nitrogen have? Five. Five valence electrons. And carbon has how many? Four. Four. And because this has a minus charge, that means we're adding one more electron. So we add one plus one. So we add these together, it should be a total of 10 electrons. So if we count the number of total electrons, it's two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So we have 10 electrons around it. So then the only way that we can form everybody reaches octet is if we have a, a triple bond. We share six electrons, lone pair and a triple bond. You guys see that or is it kind of easy? Yeah, I can see. Okay. Good. So let's move on. Okay. So again, we want to show that we can reach our octet. So when the guys are sharing um, electrons, we often will sit there and show that each one reaches his octet. We know that hydrogen's octet is two electrons, where like in the case of bromine is eight. So each of those are contributing. This is the electron that is going to be shared. And then we show, show the sharing, okay? So in the case of hydrogen sulfide, we have two hydrogens, one sulfur. Each hydrogen is going to be contributing one electron. Sulfur has six valence electrons. So for sulfur to have eight around it, it's going to share one with one hydrogen and the other one with the other hydrogen. And then in the case of nitrogen, nitrogen is a diatomic. So in that case, we have five around this nitrogen, five around this nitrogen. The only way that it can reach its octet is if it forms a triple bond. So then we end up with just N triple bond N. Okay, piece cake? Yes, no, maybe? I have a question, Dr. Henry. Yes. Um, are there going to be like occasions where you have to structure it 
a certain way. Like for instance, let's say you have an acid, like for a little yep. structure, do you have to structure it like a certain way for it to be identified as an acid? Yes, well, an acid, in the case of an acid, let's say we're talking just simple, hydrochloric acid, HCl. Well, an acid is considered to be an ionic compound, right? Is that true? Yes. So in that case, we have hydrogen, which would be plus. So we would just draw it like this. And then we'd have chlorine, which would be minus. Okay, so that shows that there are two ionic compounds that are interacting with each other, right? So, but there's no electrons that are being shared compared to if we're talking about hydrochloric gas, which is an ionic, uh, which is a covalent compound, that guy is gonna be drawn like this. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Okay. So let's say we're talking about um, nitric acid. Okay. So this guy is a polyatomic ion. That's covalent. So we know that that's NO3 minus, right? So that means we have an extra electron. So who's gonna be my center atom in this case? The nitrogen. Nitrogen. Okay, so we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, around nitrogen, five valence electrons, right? Right. Okay, we also have three oxygen. How many valence electrons does it have around it? Six. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what did I just say about this extra electron? That you added it? We need to add it. Okay, so I always like adding it to the center atom. Okay, so in this case, we want to try to make sure that everybody reaches this octet. Race this guy, and then I'm going to put it here. All right? Okay, so these guys could be sharing this one. This guy could be sharing this one. This guy could be sharing that one, those two electrons. All right? So in this case, nitrogen is being a little screwed. So we're going to say this way. Oops. Oops, come on. This way and this way. So if we did it like this, would everybody reach its octet? So we have two, four, six, eight around the oxygen. Two, four, six, eight around this oxygen, two, four, six, eight around this oxygen, and two, four, six around our nitrogen. Is everybody happy? No. 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 Okay, so we needed to make some type of modification. So what if we put a double bond over here? Now would everybody be happy? Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six. Right, two, four, six, eight, if I can count. Eight around this oxygen, two, four, six, eight around this oxygen, two, four, six, eight around this oxygen, 
and two, four, six, eight around that nitrogen. Everybody have eight around them? Yes. Yes. So this guy would be good. We just want to put brackets around it to let us know that it's a negative charge. And we know that it's interacting with that H plus, which it probably got the electron from. So I'm going to erase this. Give me room. So then I would write my H plus next to it. And this will let, let me know that it was an acid. So AQ. Okay. Okay. So, but let's say we didn't make it an acid. Let's say it was a gas. And that's going to change things around a little bit, right? Again, the nitrogen is going to be our center atom. But now we have. We have this guy, and then we have H on top. So that would be one bond. We have this guy. We have this guy. So that would be the five, and then we'd have this oxygen here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we'd have this as an option, right? Or we could also do it like this, which is probably what is going to happen. Where the Ox, I mean, the hydrogen is going to come off of the oxygen. So the goals for all the elements to uh, follow the octet rule and to yes. also add a total valence electrons? That's right. And that is correct. So we said that hydrogen has a total of five valence electrons. And each oxygen has a total of six valence electrons. So we have five plus three times six. plus one. So we add all that together. That's going to be 24. Yep. Okay. So we need to make sure we have 24 electrons around us. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Works. Okay, so do you see the distinction between the two? Yeah, the, it's a lot. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so we're going to stop right here, and then we'll pick this back up. So next week, your first lab is going to be, uh, you're going to be using these guys to make your Lewis dot structure and your compounds. So you guys have these in your packet? Yep. yep. You said yep? Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. So let's talk about the lab. Um, Were we supposed to have a CD or DVD, Dr. Henry? What was that? Were we supposed to have a, the CD or DVD for the. No, that's the reason I gave you the slide. Okay. You could use a CD or a DVD if you get hurt up, but I gave you this for that reason so you didn't have to. 
they're going to just cut the film out of there because it's the same film that are used for DVD. Uh, the little layer, the plastic layer that's on the DVD is the same thing as the diffraction slide. So, do right. you guys see your diffraction slide? I got to find mine. Hold on. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. What's today? Today's Wednesday. They cut it out of it. Yeah, you're going to cut it out. Keep it. So let me stop sharing. So if you guys go to your syllabus. Okay. Wait, if we go in our syllabus, what? Go to your syllabus. The lab should be posted. Do you guys see the lab? Hey, Selena, I heard you sent out a leak to your colleagues. Can you yeah. put that link in the chat so I can put it on your... Lifesaver. Yeah, let me do that. Yes, thank you. Okay, what link am I looking at for in the syllabus? Well, the lab link? It would be the lab link, yes. Oh, the one that says lab Monday and Wednesday? No, 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 not that link. I'm sorry, you're looking for the... Under modules, it should be under modules, the lab assignment. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Modify spectroscopy. You guys see it? Yep. Okay, so that's your instructions. If you click on the link, it'll actually show you, but it's the, the, the one that they used is the older model. This is the newer one. And that is the new and improved point. Okay, thank you, Selena. I'm gonna put that in there as well too. Because it shows you how to do the link, right? I mean, how to build it. Yeah, it shows you how to build it. I slowed it down um, to follow the steps. <laughs> okay. Except for the black paper, there's already has it on there. Yeah. Yeah, but you guys are gonna have to put your yes. Yeah. So you're gonna take your you have to glue it. your template, and then you're gonna put your black paper behind it. And what I recommend, if you have a glue stick, you can just kind of glue it on there. Or if you don't have a glue stick, you can tape it on there. And you're gonna need scissors, tape. You're gonna need your your diffraction slide. Then you're gonna need your you have three packets of glow sticks. One of them is already open. One that's already open has three different colors in it. So you're gonna use that one. And then you're gonna use the one that has three different colors on the label. You're gonna use that one as well. Wait, what is that again? So you're gonna use a total of six glow sticks. So oh, okay. you have three packets there. So one is gonna be a mono color one that isn't open. So you don't wanna use the one that is not open. You wanna save that for later. That's for another set of labs. Okay. Gotcha. So you're going to use the one that's open and you're also going to use the one that has three different colors on the label. Okay. And then you should have a total of six LEDs. And you guys should have uh, alligator clips. So you want to put your alligator clips on the bottom of your LEDs. So you always want to try to put black on the black line and you can use red on the other or you can use another color on the other because I tried to give you colors that were match but I think I, I ran out of colors at some point so we had to make do with what we had. Do we need the black paper for anything else? Uh, no but you can save it because there's a possibility that you'll screw up with your cutting so when you guys cut you want to cut the red lines. So the red lines are your cut lines. That's I printed your guys' color to make it a little bit easier for you. The, the tight dashed lines, those are your fold lines. Those guys are going to be folded down. 
and then the the y dash lines those guys are going to be folded up so or out okay the leds and like the glow sticks are they going to go inside the box they're not going to go inside the box you're using the box that's just going to be used kind of like a it's it is a spectrometer it's going to allow you to see the diffracted um the diffracted light that's coming from your leds and your and your glow sticks okay okay so you're gonna use your your camera you can attach it to your camera on your phone at some point or you can just kind of hold it up to your camera and use it that way Question. <laughs> okay. Wait, Doctor, how do you say for the the film that we have to tape to the spectrometer? You just. Yep. Cut it out because I like taped the whole thing onto the spectrometer. <laughs> I didn't want oh, to. Yeah, you, you usually cut it out because it's it's kind of bulky. Otherwise, I mean, I guess you could tape it to the top of it. That'll be fine. But you know, I find it's a little easier to manage if you just cut it out of the the casing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then so once we have like the light of the glow stick or. The LED, do we take a picture of it? That is correct. And we're gonna put that into our Excel table. No, you're gonna well, you're gonna put that in there, but you're also going to upload it onto uh spectral workbench. Okay. Which is the link, it should be a link on your thing. If it's not a link, then you fix it so. There's no link. That's why I'm just looking at it. Okay. Because so it, it just says, take photos of your phone glow stick, white lamp in the sun, and then do not look directly. It gives us like the link. I'll just Google it. Yeah. So I just upload the pictures there. Yeah. And it's going to allow you to calibrate. So then you want to go to photo work, workbench. It's going to uh -huh. tell you how to calibrate your, your, your spectrometer. And then the only thing is that you guys are going to be using sunlight and you're going to be using um, like a, a lamp, a white light to sit there and do your calibration instead of uh, a mercury lamp. Okay. Okay. Questions? And then I know you said that we have to answer two questions at the end, mm -hmm. but there's only one question. So I'm assuming we're answering that one. Well, yes, you're gonna answer that one question. Okay. Which is basically I, just to calculate the number of photons. Yes, for each of your light sources. Okay. Do we have to like record ourselves doing all this or no? You will have to record yourself doing all of this if you don't make it to one of the labs. And then you want to share the link of you doing it. Okay. Okay. So Selena, did you already bill your? The spectrometer? Good, good job. Wow, Cassie, that was quick. I like crafts, so. Yeah. Dr. Henry, if we can't make it to the 1130, can we go to this, the one that like at seven? You can go to anyone you wanna to go to, yes. Okay. Yes, and then tomorrow I'll also have one at, um, during my office hours, I'll be doing a couple of the labs there too. Oh, okay. Your office yeah. hours are. I think they're one something. Yep.
2.30 to 5.30? Yep. All right. We're not doing it right now. Nope. Okay. I'll pull everything out like we are. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can do it right now, but you're going to just record yourself. But if you wait till 11, 1130, I'll be in that in your lab. Okay. The your seven o'clock lab. So. Well, I, I teach tonight, so I will I'll probably be there tomorrow. Okay. What I'm saying also today at 1130, I will be in the seven o'clock lab at 1130 today. Um, Not 1130 tonight, 1130 today, 1130 a.m. So yeah, if so you want to do it then. So there's two labs, 11:30, and then basically the yeah. one we met. Seven. Yeah. So I have I have physiology, so I'll have a double. I'll be working with you and physiology at the same time. Okay. I'll just see you at seven, and if you don't see me at seven, then I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds great. But for sure, maybe yeah, I'll, I'll just be there at seven. Okay. So if we don't make it to chapter eight on Monday. Right? If we don't finish chapter eight on Monday, we should finish chapter seven. But if we don't finish chapter eight on Monday, it won't be on the exam. So, okay. So I'll see you guys on, well, either at 11 later on today or seven tonight okay. or tomorrow or on Monday. Got it. So many possibilities. What was that? So many possibilities. Yes, so many. Okay. I'll talk okay. to you later. See you. Bye-bye.